So you've got your cardiovascular genomics, you've got your cardiovascular risk factors, and you've got genetic expression testing. Those three things, along with the non-invasive testing, allow you to figure out whether or not your therapy is working or not. So let me give you an example. Patient comes in with chest pain. You do all the testing, all the risk factor analysis. You find out he only has maybe some 30% blockages in some of the smaller, I mean some of the larger arteries like the LAD, right coronary, or left circumflex. But he's not a surgical candidate because the blockage is, is really not that bad. So he's a medical therapy candidate. So you decide what you're going to do. There's a lot of things that can be done to reduce the three finite risk factors. And that's really where you want to aim your therapy. Look at the three finite responses and treat those. At the same time you're doing all that, you get a baseline chorus gene expression. Well, the score is from 0 to 40. Let's say he comes in with a score of 25, which is fairly you know, moderate to low risk. You start your program, you wait about six months, and you repeat the chorus gene expression, and you repeat some of the non-vascular testing, like coronary calcium score, the endopat, the computerized pulse wave analysis, all of which will tell you about endothelial dysfunction of the coronary arteries and structure of the coronary arteries. And let's suppose the score drops from 25 to 20. What you have just found out is that test has actually reduced the finite responses because that test measures inflammation, oxidative stress, and vascular immune dysfunction. So you have then successfully reduced the patient's outcome for coronary heart disease and myocardial infarction. And you can show them the score and they realize that the therapeutic program is working. That's motivational because once the patient sees that, that will continue your program. And in fact, they'll probably ask you, what can I do to get it down even more?